Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Monday, June 27th, 2016, around 7.35 in the evening, Berwick, Massachusetts. It's the sun is going down, it's clouding up, tomorrow could be on and off rain showers, not not all places are going to see it, but a better chance for some um, lightly scattered showers and thunder showers will be Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Some news to report. The South Coast Rail Project for the MBTA to connect um, South Station to Fall River and New Bedford's price tag has gone up to over $3 billion and it might not be built until the late 2020s. No shock there about the price escalating. It probably escalate even more and stuff. And if they can't fund this, these projects, why don't they cancel them? And also, the Nashville Predators have re-signed forward Flip Forsberg to a six-year contract extension worth $36 million. That's a lot of money. And the and Forsberg is becoming a decent player for the Predators. He, he delivers a lot of gold. So that's a building block for them. And that's about it on the news. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about the former NHL team, the Colorado Rockies. The Colorado Rockies were around for seven seasons in the NHL, but they were not a great team. And they only made the playoffs once during their existence, and they never finished over 500 background of the Colorado Rockies. The NHL was gave um, Denver a uh, f- expansion franchise in 1975 t- along with Seattle and they were going to expand to 20 teams in 1976. But there was several unstable teams in the NHL during that time period and the NHL for- f- canceled the expansion franchises and when one of the teams at Kansas City Scouts were available, um, Jack Victor's, a businessman from Denver, Colorado, bought the team and he moved them to Denver, Colorado and they played at the McNichol Sports Arena which was built in 1975 to house the Nuggets and a WHA team at, that was located in Denver at the time that moved away. And Colorado is was one, is a kind of a hockey hotbed in the United States. And when the uh, Colorado Rockies played in Denver during those years, they stunk. They were put in the Smite Division, which is now the Pacific Division of the NHL. They didn't have too many stars playing for them during their time period. Some of the um, stars they had were Barry Back, Lanny McDonald, Chico Leach, Wolf Plummet, Renee Roberts, Ron Ramage, and Bobby Schmutt. But they never played together. They played at various times. Usually, the Colorado Rockies would finish in the basement in the Smite Division. But one year, 1978, they made the playoffs, even though they had a bad record. They only won 19 games that year. But this was, at the time, the NHL playoff format. They finished second in the Smite Division. That was a very weak division that year. And back then, the second place team of each of the NHL divisions automatically qualified for the playoffs and the Rockies faced off against the Philadelphia Flyers in the first round. The Flyers slept, swept them off the pl- out of the playoffs in two straight games and there was um, a lot of ownership changes a few, few times like in 1979 they were going to be moving to New Jersey 
but there was no suitable hockey rink in the state of New Jersey because the uh, Meadowlands wasn't even being built yet and they were blocked by the New York Rangers and the New York Islanders attendance at the uh, McNichol Sports Arena was awful also they had a lot of coaches go in and out none of them stayed more than one season they had um John Don Chelia's coach in 1979 and 1980 but he only lasted one year and with all these ownership changes the team was going into serious debt and there was talk about the team moving again and in 1982 they were there was a deal that was going to um, move the Rockies north of the border to Ottawa and they were probably going to be renamed the Ottawa Senators but that deal fell through at the last minute and then another owner prospective owner John McMullen bought the team in 1982 and he moved them to New Jersey and they were renamed the New Jersey Devils Brendan Burnham Arena and they've been there ever since and the overall record for the Colorado Rockies was 113 wins, 281 losses, and 86 ties, registering 312 points. They had seven captains of the team. It seems like every year they had captain after captain after captain after captain. And the Colorado Rockies had a C for their uniform, which was kind of like the the modification of the state flag of Colorado and after the Rockies left Denver minor league hockey thrived in um, Denver Colorado they had an IHL team the Denver Bears which was pretty pretty awesome and in 1995 the um, Quebec Nordiques moved to um, Denver and they were renamed the Colorado Avalanche and they won two Stanley Cups there the Colorado Avalanche so NHL had very successful in Denver Colorado since 1995 too bad the Rockies did not have any success in 1993 there was a um, the Colorado Rockies name was reactivated for a National League baseball team that plays in the National League West that's about it on the Colorado Rockies and sometime later on this week the next team I'm going to cover for um, NHL teams that are no longer in existence is the Oakland slash California Golden Seals. That's about it on that. And tomorrow, three more video blogs coming your way. First video blog will be about the top 10 toughest NHL players of all time. Second video blog will be about the former CBS game show, primetime game show, The Power of 10 hosted by Drew Carey, which was on in 2007-2008. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about my memories of the Bill Bellwecka Flick, the movie theater in the Bellwecka Mall. Keep calm, everybody. And I'm a Julie Button guy. Molly Roseblood of WCCO Accents, Nice Legs. Elizabeth Hot, so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Swansea, so awesome. Linda Church of WPIX Channel 11 New York has it. Is such a cougar and has nice legs. Bobby Gibbs of ABC 11 in Raleigh, North Carolina is the best. And she has a sweet southern accent. And Julie Donaldson of Comcast Sports Mid-Atlantic is so, so awesome. And in the words of Sean Jack, get out. See you later. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Good night.